U.S. ranchers are shocked to see the biggest drop in cattle production in almost 60 years. Costs are shooting up as well, with everything from livestock to supplies to feed and fuels facing increases of more than 50%. Industry experts say that now profitability is in jeopardy and many operations are becoming unviable due to the massive losses farmers and ranchers have suffered in recent years. The outlook couldn't be gloomier for the nation's food supply chain. Beef prices are expected to skyrocket as inventory shrinks even more in the months ahead. This is an unprecedented crisis that will hit producers, retailers, and consumers alike and trigger some worrying consequences for our food systems. We've a lot to cover in today's video, but before moving on, we kindly ask you to support our work with a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Beef producers in the U.S. are still thinning their herds in near record numbers, and experts are warning that this will lead to some alarming supply problems in the beef industry starting this summer. In the past few years, extreme drought has prompted U.S. ranchers to reduce their herd sizes by sending more cattle to slaughter, explains Desmond Subal, principal economist with Farm Credit. Typically, this would drive cattle prices down, but now, in an environment of inflation and high demand, prices are at record levels. And if there's less supply in the future, that will push up prices further, consequently affecting consumer prices, Subul says. In 2022, producers sold thousands of extra cattle in the fall to make up for a shortage in feed, adds Stuart Smythe, associate professor in the College of Agriculture and Bioresources. People just had to take a huge hit that year, he said. When the U.S. runs low on corn or feed, it imports from Canada. But the neighboring country was facing the same shortages last year, highlighted Dennis Leecraft, executive vice president of the U.S. Cattle Association. But importing feed can't always solve the problem on its own. Cattle producers are used to dealing with extreme situations, Leecraft stressed. Unfortunately, when you get multiple years in a row, that's where you start to run out of the feed inventories. And that forces you into more difficult decisions in terms of reducing cattle numbers. Given that this spring is also dry in many regions, in some areas just as bad as 2022, that forced producers to sell, Smythe said. Right now, more than two-thirds of the U.S. cattle herd is in an area affected by drought, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, leading to the largest contraction of the U.S. cattle herd in 60 years. In fact, U.S. producers have contracted their herds three years in a row for a variety of reasons. And while this means more beef was being produced in the short term, it meant that supply would eventually go down as herds got smaller and producers sent fewer cattle to slaughter while they tried to rebuild their herds. Although it is normal for production to fluctuate from year to year, this time something is different, says Sabor. In central North Dakota, for example, the 2022 drought reached disastrous levels, wreaking havoc on farmers, ranches, and their land. One such rancher was Shane Anderson of Towner, who had been ranching on his family land for nearly 20 years, building his own herd of commercial cattle, only to be forced to scale back his herd. It was a multitude of things, but just knowing in the back of my mind that we had not had any moisture in the spring, I didn't want to get to a place where I was trying to move bears in the middle of summer, Anderson says, of making the decision to sell cattle last year. In an average year, his ranch runs 300 to 350 head. During 2022's drought, he sold over 100 heads. When we were in the middle of the breeding season, it looked like our hay crop was already going to be adversely affected. I felt better making the decisions to move that many animals, knowing that if it started to rain, I would be able to graze more acres later or do something with that grass, he revealed. If I didn't think this through, then every decision I made from there on out would probably be a knee-jerk reaction and maybe wouldn't be the best option. Just like Anderson, 
many had to make tough decisions due to less in forage, pastures, and rangeland. I'm definitely noticing an increase in dispersals coming into the bread cow sales this year, expose Kin and Brandt, SDSU Extension Cow Calf Field Specialist. You can definitely tell that the increase in feed prices is driving some folks to bring some additional bread cows to sale. I think a lot of guys, especially on the western part of the state, are pretty quick to pull that trigger early in the year and say, we're dry, we're going to make cuts early, Brandt says. By now, hundreds of ranchers just did full dispersal of everything over eight years old, he notes. The same concerns beef producers faced in the past couple of years are likely to linger for 2023. The year following a drought year can be tough for forage production for grazing, even with normal precipitation, explains Jerry Volsky, Nebraska Extension Range and Forage Specialist. The reasons are most likely associated with the reduced root and rhizome growth, formation of new buds, and overall energy reserve status of grazing plants, he says. In Kansas, Pratt Livestock Assistant Manager Steve Stratford says that everybody is concerned about what will happen this summer. There's no hay left, no pasture coming, unless we get rain. That plus inflation and the high cost of inputs right now, expenses are just crazy, and we don't know what to do. It's just downright hard to find any hay, Stratford emphasized. The hay pipeline from northern and eastern regions where they did have some rain last year has been used up. There are no local supplies left. There is nothing to bring in. Usually at this time we see pasture greening up or we have wheat to put them out on, but that is not happening. Stratford revealed that many Pratt County producers were forced to overgraze their pastures through the winter because there just wasn't hay locally to bring the cows in and feed them. It's bad. It's really bad out there, he describes. You can drive around and just look. There is no pasture coming. We need rain in the worst way. On top of that, the cost of inputs such as minerals, premix, and proteins, additives that can extend feed supplies or make poorer quality feed palatable or part of a balanced ration, faced price increases of more than 50%, putting them out of reach for the typical local cattle producer. This drought situation is affecting everyone, Stratford said. If we don't get rain in the next week or two, you will see the biggest sell-off of beef cattle in the area that has ever happened in history. There are third and fourth generation producers here today wondering how they're going to make it. They're being forced into selling because there is no feed left. We are in jeopardy. At the same time, local hay producer Jim Berkner said that all kinds of hay are at a premium right now, but there's little for sale and little to find. If you have hay, it is a precious commodity, he outlines. Local cattle producers Rocky and Linda Fox have raised beef southwest of Pratt for decades are considering livestock diversification in light of the difficulties in the cattle industry. No matter what, the cattle have to be fed, Linda Fox said. We will all be standing in bread lines before we give up, but it is getting serious out here. The Director of Public and Governmental Affairs at the Wyoming Farm Bureau Federation, Brett Maline, highlighted that it's more than just the hay prices leading people to give up their cows. Equipment costs, diesel fuel, supplies, everything is going up, he stressed. The farmers were having a hard time even being able to get some of their fertilizer, let alone afford it so that's cut into the crop yields. For some farmers, the cost barrier is even greater than supplies, Maline said. We're getting more and more people that are just selling their grass instead of running, you know, a cow-calf operation or cow yearling. They're just running livestock for somebody else to help cut their risk. They can't afford to buy back in. From now on, producers will increasingly struggle with profitability amid the unpredictable seasons, as climate change makes drought, flooding, and wildfires more common, the experts warned. 
During the 2023 Cattle Industry Convention in New Orleans, market analysts with Cattle Facts told beef producers that this could be a record price year for all classes of cattle. Economist Kevin Good of Cattle Facts said that in 2022, we had a 13.5% culling rate across the industry. That is the highest ever. Slaughter numbers of both cows and finished cattle will be shrinking in 2023, and buyers will have to pay up to get what they want. In normal times, when producers reduce their herds and beef production goes up, prices for cattle go down, which in turn can soften prices along the supply chain. But because of inflation and continued high demand for beef, producers are still seeing elevated prices for their cattle, further incentivizing them to reduce their herds, the analyst wrote in a report. It's not pushing down those prices as you'd normally see, they said. That's likely to remain the case and could affect prices along the supply chain all the way to retail, he said. Since producers can only contract their herd so much, eventually they will need to sell fewer cattle and rebuild the herd, which means less production over the next few months, and that usually sends cattle prices higher. If the U.S. face more droughts in the coming months and years, producers will struggle further even more. It would be tough for the sector, that's for sure, the analyst added, warning that you can't lose money for that many years and still be a viable operation. It won't take a lot of time for people not directly tied into cattle production to notice less beef in the grocery stores. There is a shortage coming. By the end of the summer, if we don't get any rain, there will be a considerable lack of beef for the consumer. The imbalances between supply and demand are only growing larger. In fact, last year, we had the highest per capita U.S. beef consumption in 12 years at 58 pounds. Still, in the face of that supply, we also had record retail beef prices at $7.35 per pound. You can expect to pay way more for beef for the rest of the year and well into 2024. The number of beef cows, which amounts to about a third of all cattle and calves in the U.S., remains at the smallest count since 1963. This crisis could literally break our food systems and spark shortages that would persist for way longer than anyone could ever imagine. Our food supply chains are already in shambles, and any new disruption has the potential to trigger a cascade of failures that would send not only ranchers but retailers and consumers over the edge. This will ultimately affect all of us and effectively transform beef into a luxury item that only a very selected group of people will have access to. Unfortunately, all we can do is hope and pray that the drought eases and more rain comes along. Until then, make sure you stock up on your favorite meats before prices spiral from current levels. Thank you for watching.